Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's everybody. I think that's a, a great, uh, uh, you know, way to, to sort of view to sort of like building your pedals and stuff. And then, you know, um, everybody's every builder's view is sort of different and, uh, you know, uh, on, on what they're trying to achieve. But you, you, you'd also do custom work. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so what sort of custom work requests do you get? And how, how do you actually because it must be very difficult someone coming to you and say right i want this and maybe what the wanting cannot be achieved with some of the parts and things that they're, they're talking about or you might have to maybe move them in a sort of a, like a slightly different direction so how do you actually uh uh realize their expectations so the first thing i try to do because custom work is is really difficult for me to do with a day job with you know working i used to work three jobs for a while and so it was really difficult back then but now working the one job it's a little easier but i try and steer people to what they really want first so if somebody comes to me and they're like hey this is what i want and i already know of a pedal that does that i'm going to steer them to go and just buy the pedals they actually want because a custom work pedal is going to be far more expensive than anything that they could just go out and buy. Hmm. And then on that effect, if they still want me to do it, I'll I'll try. And some stuff it's it's out of my knowledge range. You know, I I can program pedals um, somewhat, but I can't do everything. You know, hmm. I'm still new to programming. For, for digital pedal stuff. And when it comes to analog pedals, some people are like, hey, can you make this pedal? And I take a look at it. I look for a schematic of it. I try and figure it out. And then if I finally figure it out, sometimes I'll come back and be like, okay, but it's going to be, you know, this big because you can't fit that into a tiny little container. And people don't understand, you know, because nowadays you see pedals like banana pedals and you know, all these micro pedals that do all this amazing stuff in this tiny container. But I, I'm not a manufacturer. I'm a guy in an apartment building at a table. You know, my parts aren't microscopic. So, you know, I can do some SMD stuff, but there's no way I can build a one-off custom pedal that's tiny and does all this stuff because it's just not, it's not practical for me or for that person. Sure. Yeah. You know, at that point, they might as well go out and buy the other one if that's yeah. what they want in a tiny container. And then, you know, people want hand painted artwork sometimes. Sometimes people want printed artwork. And so then I have to figure out the artwork for a custom pedal. And sometimes that's almost as difficult as actually building the effect or, you know, ordering PCB and stuff because it's, it's like I can do certain things and I can't because I'm hand painting it or. You know, they want it printed. It's like, but they want it in UV. Well, I can't do both because UV has to be hand painted right now. Mm. I just, if anybody out there knows of a UV printer that, like, somebody that can print UV reactive stuff, that would be great because I'd love to do some stuff like that. But at the same time, it's like, well, somebody wants something as colorful as what I do, but they want it screen printed. And that's not practical either because mm -hmm. each color you have to have a screen, right? Yeah, that's so going like, to be so costly. Yeah. So that's why I get my stuff UV printed because it's, you know, with a, um, a UV printer, not UV reactive ink. So it's just different. So UV printer prints, you know, all the colors, whereas UV reactive paint will react in a black light, like a black light poster. Right. So just for a clarification there. Um, yeah. So glow in the dark and black, black light stuff. That's what, you know, makes it glow. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And so from start to finish, I, I have to talk to the person, you know. Sometimes it can take a month just to come up with the idea for a custom pedal. And sometimes it's like I slap it together in a couple of days. It just depends on what it is. Mm. Really. Wow, incredible, incredible. And which builders uh, do you admire today? There's a 
lot of great builders out there. So if there I is. miss somebody, if I miss somebody, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> we won't but, hold you to it. Uh, but yeah, I gotta say, uh, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because there are so many builders, you know, yeah. and, and and new builders starting out as well. And I find it so interesting, just you know, researching all these different builders and and finding out about them and their work and where they're from you know yeah it, it's an I'm, interesting I'm time how many people tell me they're like oh yeah i build pedals and it's like everybody builds pedals i guess now yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. Do. yeah yeah and that's great i mean i think you know it's just like music i mean the more sounds that are out there the more you have to choose from yeah the market is flooded that's fine people still want you know what they want yeah, absolutely. Well, Chris Jupiter said exactly the same thing when we, we spoke to him and he was saying, you know, a lot of people say the market's flooded and it's saturated. He said, but you have to really look beyond that. And there are things, opportunities to create pedals that, uh, like standard pedals, but tweaking them and making them different and making them unique. And I, and, um, Frank at uh, FFX, you know, he's got a fantastic pedal called the All You Can Boost, and it's it's a it's an overdrive. Um, but it and you think, well, what can, what more can you do with an overdrive that hasn't been done? But you talk to Frank, and it's like, yeah, actually, there's lots more that can be done with. Uh... Yeah, very nice. I mean, yeah, we make a boost. I, I mean, how many boosts can be out there? I'll tell you what, if you plug in 20 boosts, not one of those is probably sound the same. Yeah. I mean, maybe if you plugged in some of the OEM pedals, you know, the little micro pedals, they might all be the exact same, but that's yeah. different. But if you grab 20 boosts from different people, I mean, you could even grab, you know, the JHS boost, the Boss boost, the the big pedal companies, you grab all their boosts, they're mm. all sound different. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, what, what do you, what, I mean, you mentioned time-based stuff, a lot of people are into fuzzies. I'm more of an overdrive and boost kind of person. I mean, what, what does, what do you tend to prefer? Is it, is it delays and stuff or? So for me, I, I, I love overdrive. I love distortion. Yeah. I'm a fuzz guy. I, I build fuzzes and people love my fuzz stuff and I, I think it's because I'm not a fuzz guy that people love my fuzzes because it, it's going to be very specific. You know, I want it to be something that I'm going to love. I'm not going to give you guys something that I don't, you know, I'm not behind. And I've got a box filled with old designs that I just tossed out because I didn't, I think Justice got a couple of them. Oh, and demo right. them. Yeah. And, and <laughs> wherever, was, this, like, wherever this falls, Justice is just not yeah. far away well, and it was funny he was like he was like do you have anything like just you know off bench and i was like i have a whole box of stuff i will put it in cases and send it to you mm. and so you know that's the thing for me is like for years i played a grunge pedal live on stage for years and i never really thought about it but like it was totally dampening my playing ability because it just made me play lazy because there's so much gain, so much distortion, so much saturation. It made me play lazy. And so when I started looking for, you know, that sound and I played out of overdrive, I sounded terrible because mm -hmm. my fingers were so lazy. And I found a lot of people, they, they use the gain, the, that much gain to cover up some of the lazy playing. And with a boost or an overdrive, like something lower gain, but still mm. that cuts, everything that you play that's, you know, just a little bit off, it really comes out. Mm. And I feel like overdrive and boost has made me a better player, for one. And so that's why I love it. I love that stuff. And I played in a, um, a power metal band for a long time. So high gain distortions and stuff were my thing. And fuzz never was, you know, fuzz, it doesn't, it doesn't do the same thing. Mm. And I understand why people love fuzz. There's so much good stuff out there. I mean, mm. I'm in all the 60s, 70s, you know, psychedelic stuff. So there's tons of fuzz. 
Yeah. But for me, it's got to be overdrive. Yeah. I'm the same. I'm the same, I must yeah. say. So, have you got any more panels there to, uh, that you've done? Oh, yeah. Got, that I you can maybe show us. For you. Um, sneak peek. It might actually be ready. This oh, is right. the Ocean Man. Right. And what's that? That's, what's, that what's that pedal? So, it's, it's a chorus pedal uh, at oh, its heart. Nice. Yeah. And it does a sub octave um, chorus mix. It's got a blend knob to blend between either the sub octave and the chorus in the bottom mode. In the wash mode, it's um, a chorus, like just a standard like eight voice chorus. Yep. And on the other side of the blend, it's um, a glitch chorus. So right. you think shallow waters, you think uh, those kind of pedals. Yep. It's it's a glitch chorus. And then that's the wash mode. And then in tide mode, it's a vibrato or a chorus. Oh, nice. And then it has a bubble knob, which brings in a extra delay time on the last part of the chorus. Mm. And it will either delay up or down. Or ex uh, I think on bottom mode, the bubbles travel upwards. So wow. if you think of like the rainbow machine, yeah. When you hit the magic knob and the feedback goes a certain direction. So they'll go up in the bottom mode, which is the sub octave. Yep. In the wash mode, they'll go down. So it'll your your signal will get, you know, semitone lower on each sound of cool. while they're tripping down. And then in the tide mode, it actually goes with the vibrato. So it'll travel up and then back down. Yeah, I was I was playing chorus. I had a, a little break this today, and I was playing some chorus and stuff. And it's just it's a lovely effect. I really like it. Yeah. You know, and we, we, I don't play enough of it, and we don't hear enough of it these days. Do yeah. We? Well, and the thing for me with the chorus pedal was most of the time when I turn on my chorus pedal, if it's on for like two or three minutes, I forget that it's on because I don't notice the difference in the sound anymore, and then it, it either goes too much or yeah. too too little. And so I wanted something that just fit, you know? Okay. And I hear the chorusing on the voice in Ocean Man, the Ween song. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that was the idea for the, the bottom mode was to have that low octave and mixed with the chorus and everything. And it turned out great. And so I was just like, well, what else can I do with this? I, I want more. Yeah. So three modes and you know it's it's a killer pedal i can't wait for everybody to see it i do have a demo up on um, instagram for it i'm gonna check that out yeah i'm um, gonna check that out speaking of fuzz that we were earlier this yep. was one of the first actual shock rock releases after the green fuzz which is the red fuzz wow um, it was a hand painted. I mean, it's in a glow in the dark hand painted enclosure. I don't know. Superb. And so, what? Uh, tell us about the fuzz. Uh, tell about it, its its sound, its tone. You know so, how it reacts and everything else. It's it's a fuzz a fuzz face uh, at its heart, and I actually built it. I built five of them, and they're all out in the wild except for this one, and. Josh from JHS, I built them for him. Like, just he inspired me to build them um, from his his videos. And so I sent him one, and the other ones are all. I have one, and then there's three other ones out there. I think Justice has one, and then there's a couple more somewhere else. And I'm always surprised to see where my pedals come up because some guy from Germany <laughs> emailed me and was like, "Hey, can you build me some more pedals?" And I was like, "I didn't send one to you, but." Sure. <laughs> um, well, funny enough, I was I was taught we were interviewing. Uh, you know the band, or you probably heard Wishbone Ash. The, uh, the yeah, we was interviewing Mark Abrahams at, uh, at Wishbone Ash, and as we were talking, he pulled up this pedal by Hello Sailor Effects, and he says, "I've got one. Of, I've got one of Joe's pedals." So uh, yeah, it pop, it's, it's pop up all over the so place. Surprising. And did you yeah, hear from Josh at all? Uh, 
actually we talk every once in a while on Instagram. I mean, I'm not like close friends with him or anything, but you know, I've sent him a couple things and we've talked about a couple different pedals. Hmm. Um, he he's a nice guy. Uh, that's as much as I can say, really. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's not like I'm close with him or anything. But I've sent him a couple things, and we've had a couple short conversations. Cool, cool. Yeah. And have you got anything else there to show us? Or? Yeah. Let's um, have a look. Let's have a look at your your goodies. Yeah. So right now, these are the ones that are the set that I'm selling right now. Yeah. So that's it's, the yellow sign delay and the yellow sign delay and the beast boost and. It's kind of the same idea as the um, super awesome fun pedal experience, yeah. <laughs> mouthful, um, where you know you've got your gain pedal and you've got your delay. I mean, that's what I really always used, and so I thought that would be the perfect mixture of things to put together. Yeah. This one is exclusive for um, right now. I mean, I'm only going to make the five of them, and that's it. Mm. And so there's there's three still available the other two have already sold um and they come in a set together and so i tried to get the colors to you know go together well and then the beast boost was actually one of the first pedals i ever worked on um i've been building and modifying the circuit for about six years now originally it was a treble booster just a treble booster and it was called the uh astro drive and then that moved on and became the Pluto drive. And now it's the beast boost because now it has all sorts of other stuff on it. It has a treble mode for the regular treble boost. It yep. has a GTR, which is, you know, guitar centric. And then it has a bass mode, which actually is more of a bass boost. So it actually oh, turns so- and it has a clean and a drive mode. So if you're on clean mode and you have the bass on, you're getting your full signal through with a little extra bass. Trouble mode, you're getting a trouble boosted clean signal. And guitar mode, you're just getting your boosted signal. And on drive mode, the bass turns into almost like if you had a big muff with the gain turned down a little bit. Right. It's it's very, you know, it's very drivey at that point. I was actually told that at one point by somebody that I shouldn't call it the boost, the beast boost. I should call it the beast drive because it had more drive than a booster overdrive. Yeah. So, and the last couple of videos I've done, um, it's been guitar and drive mode. Um, cool. Did them with that. And then the yellow sign delay, it's got a oscillation switch. It's a relay bypass. It has a tone knob so that you can design you know, like how I wanted on the uh, color of time, but it, it's not quite as strong as the color of time filter, mm. but uh, it does do the same idea. And so it changes how your pedal oscillates too. So if you have it in the middle, it'll take a lot longer for the oscillation to come into full effect. Whereas if you're on one side or the other, you get full oscillation mm. a lot quicker. Cool. Anything else for there for us? I've got the Nightmare, which is actually on hold right now because I'm trying to figure out how to get a much stronger eight-way switch. Right. Um, because I've just had too many of them break. But it's a tremolo pedal, but it does eight other effects along with a tremolo. I love tremolo. Yeah. So it's got a dual tremolo, a tremolo flanger, a tremolo reverb, tremolo delay tremolo filter uh chorus tremolo it does oh, a bunch hell. of yeah you're gonna have to stop because i've got me i've got my wallet here and, and that's that, that's the last place i need to have my wallet as you're showing me all these pedals one more <laughs> because i love this so much yeah i've seen i've seen justice with that yeah yeah and so this was actually the very first um Super fun, awesome pedal experience uh, inside here. Cool. And uh, I put an expression out on this one to control the dab. <laughs> Ryan Endricon, Endricon Pedals. It's absolutely gorgeous. That is a beautiful pedal. I've been, um, it's two tremolos 
and uh, that you've got yeah. you've got i'm just doing a demo on it at the minute but the levels are, um, are, are like volumes or gains um so if you put it on zero you get no signal but then you can you know 12 o'clock's about sort of unity gain that sort of thing and then you've got depth and rate so you can actually when you engage both tremolos on you can set each rate and depth and the volume differently and you get almost like the, they're almost like bouncing off each other it's really nice so are they are they out of phase yeah yeah so yeah so they don't cancel yeah yeah oh that's yeah. great it, it's really interesting and i was demoing it i was recording it on um sunday i think it was saturday or sunday saturday and i just got this really nice point and it and, and it was just it, it, it's just it's really hard to describe just the the, the the bouncing of each other off each other it's really interesting so yeah, anyway yeah, I'm doing... yeah, that's, uh, that's what the eighth mode in this one does ah uh it's it's the two tremolos bouncing off each other one of them is a square wave and one is a sine wave ah so that you get those two different warping effects when you have the mix set differently so yeah. if the mix isn't all the way up your square wave is actually sounds like a sine wave. So nice. Yeah. And then it also does a vibrato and tremolo. So you're getting yeah. the new warping sounds. It's it's, yeah. it's fun. It is fun. It's yeah. it's so much and that's how it should be. It should be fun, you know. So